Hi, my name is Matt Tilden. I'll be your child's AP Human Geography teacher uh, for the 2021 school year. Um, I wanted, I had a meeting last night with parents and I, I of course, forgot to record it as, as one does. Um, so I am kind of re-recording a few of the, the notes from it just to make sure that you have access to the presentation if you'd like to watch it. Um, so I am going to be talking about kind of changes to this year's pacing. So I'm going to go through and talk a little bit about what is in the course as well as how we're going to do it differently this year as our schedules changed. Um, I also wanted to introduce some key kind of things to, to look at for students. So key documents, um, a copy of the unit reading schedule that they'll access, as well as a copy of um, kind of a weekly guide that I'll send students. I also wanted to talk a little bit about what a typical class period is going to look like, as well as give you as much information as we have on the AP exam right now, which is not that much. Um, so typically, AP Human Geography has seven units, and these are the units. Uh, the first one is a unit that covers kind of geographic processes and concepts, um, kind of an introduction to geography as a discipline. Um, units two through seven cover population and migration, cultural geography, political geography, agricultural geography, urban geography, and economic geography. Um, and usually this is about the order we go in with a few changes. Uh, so basically the what's going to change this year is that students are not going to take the class for a full year. They're going to take the class either first and third quarter. So uh, that should say quarter. So first and third quarter, or they're going to take the class second and third quarter. So essentially what will happen is their fourth quarter class will get switched and changed into third quarter. Um, so what, and you can kind of see what we're going to cover in each, each half. But roughly we're going to cover about half the course the first quarter, and then we're going to cover about half the course during the second quarter in which they take AP Human Geography. And one thing I wanted to note is there is going to be a little bit of off-course work. Um, so there's going to be a little bit left over at the end, and I'm going to have them do that one of two ways. The first way is they are going to have the option to do a little bit of work over midwinter break and also a little bit of work over spring break. Or they'll have the option of working from April 15th until the May 4th exam date. So um, either one will work for me. I kind of prefer the, the le working right up until the exam date, but it's up to them. All right, so I did want to share with you a few documents. Um, the first one is going to be kind of a copy of the weekly schedule that we have in here. Um, so I just wanted to show you this, and I'm going to send this to students every week. Um, it is has on it a copy of kind of what we're going to talk about each day, so the standards and topics, uh, as well as assigned readings and anything that's going to be for, it, for a grade, so anything that will show up in the grade book. Um, and probably the more important thing for students is I am also going to include kind of a weekly checklist of what they need to do for my class each week, which includes kind of everything we'll do in class, but also any of the at homework as well. So this is in an effort to try to keep us all as organized as possible, which organization is a really hard uh, piece in this class to start with. Um, but anything online is diff super difficult organization wise. Um, so I, I will send that to students probably every um, Sunday night, maybe Monday morning, depending on how it goes. All right, the other document I wanted to share with you to talk about is uh, the reading schedule for the course. Um, so I will type up basically a combination of the schedule, which has all of the assigned readings, as well as when they are due, kind of at the top. So you can see um, what I suggest in terms of reading for each day. Um, or each series of days. I try to give kids three or four days to do um, each reading. And then at the bottom, I have all of the questions that they're going to answer. So the way that they'll answer this is each student has an editable Google document um, through our, our Google Classroom page. So they'll turn it in on Google Classroom. And this has all been explained uh, in class, but it'll take a few times for us all to get it right, which is fine. Um, so students have the option of doing it in the document or taking a picture and submitting the picture. All right, so um, getting back to the presentation. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to note as well is the biggest way in which students are going to feel the uh, the schedule change is with how condensed the, 
the reading schedule is. Um, so they have more readings than students typically um, have in this class in a shorter period of time. And that is something that I really want to emphasize for students just to make sure this is a good fit for them um, because that is uh, the workload is a little bit heavier than it would be. All right, uh, so typically in a typical day in AP Human Geography so far, which has only, only had two or three of them, but uh, they sign into Google Classroom using the link at the top of the Google Classroom page. And then there is a brief eight to 10 minute introduction of the material and standards that we're talking about. So, so far all of those have been pre-recorded, um, which I probably will continue to do because I like that and I like having extra kind of extra videos of, of um, instruction to kind of use for students that either aren't here or to use in the future. So I'll probably do a lot of that this year. Um, and then they, they usually are going to be assigned an activity at the end of the video that they'll do independently. Um, at a certain time, we will come back together. We'll talk about what they've done. Um, we might do an additional activity, um, or we might have time to kind of work on uh, an assessment or an independent activity for them. So um, grades and, and assessments, I'm not going to take a ton of time on. Um, some of the stuff is a little bit to be determined, um, but there are going to be five categories for grades in here. They're going to be the, the big skills that are emphasized in the AP Human Geography course outline, um, as well as probably a classwork completion um, category. Um, so, and you'll probably see about 15 to 20 assignments in a quarter. Uh, last thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is the AP exam. Um, so this is an AP course, and at the end of an AP course, um, students have the opportunity to take the exam to earn a uh, college credit. Um, so our AP exam is scheduled for May 4th. Signups are going to be in late October and early November. Um, look for more information to come from Mr. Peretti. So basically, in the next week or two, I will be in touch with my current classes, and we will use a little bit of class time to try to sign up for, for a site called AP Classroom, which they need to be signed up in it to make sure that they have a, have a college board account. Um, and I'm also going to be in touch with my second period class, my, sorry, my second quarter class, uh, to get them signed up for college board's account as well. So we'll figure that out in the next week or two. Um, so leading up to the test, I offer exam prep sessions. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns with this, this year's AP test, but so far they're trying to stick with everything being normal until it isn't. Um, so this is not a requirement to be in the course, uh, but it is something a lot of students usually do. Um, so ways you can help out this year. Uh, I would say we've gotten off to a really good start, kind of, it seems, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like we've gotten off to a really good start. Uh, so you can help your students stay positive, ask lots of questions, try to stay in the mix as much as possible, um, help them self-monitor themselves in terms of completion of, of work. So the checklist and the readings are meant to help do that. And then one really important one is to try to give me feedback of what is working and what's not, because it's hard for me, because I oftentimes make up a bunch of stuff and I don't know how students are receiving it in this format. So um, any feedback you can, you can give me as to what is working and what's not working is appreciated. All right, well, thanks. Um, Email me if you have any questions. Bye.